we are now using a, a delivery method where we get devices for repair using a safe border. It's a delivery system that we are using in this lockdown. So today we got a device from one of our customers from somewhere on Tinder. She says that this phone is a fellow and it is blacked out. It does not charge, does not power on. So I decided to make a video about diagonizing this phone, the process of fixing it and everything. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my current meter to see if this phone really does not charge. From my current meter, it looks like this phone takes in some current. But the current takes in is very low and it's fluctuating. This might be symbolizing a charging fault, a fault battery or actually a drained battery, a fault charging ice. But usually charging ice does not take current at all. So without wasting time, let's to pop it up. But it's one of the fellow smartphones. The label is just hidden here from some of this decoration the customer put on. This phone looks clean. Looks like I'm the first person to open it. It has not been to any technician before. So let me try to measure up and see if really... Let me first take out the battery. And measure the battery voltage. Yeah, the battery shows it is 3.3 .3 volts. This is actually low. A phone that is able to show that the battery low is always at around 3.6 to 3.7. So it looks like this phone drained. Usually this happens if a phone has got a shot on the motherboard or drains battery. Or oh, actually when a charging system does not bring in enough power. So let me first put in the charger and measure the current or the voltage that reaches at the terminals. You can see without a battery the phone is giving out 2.2 amps. It shows that the charging system is fine. Here it shows 3.5. This phone should be charging around 3.7. So let me take a look inside this charging port. The charging port looks clean. I'm going to first boost up this current or the battery and see if it, the phone can boot up. I'm going to use this power supply. This is a simple setup I did at home. So let's use this power supply to, to boost up the current of the battery. I can tell from these symbols that the positive is at the extreme end and the negative is this side. Here it shows that it's taking 1.8 amps. This shows that the battery is fine. It's just low. So let's wait for it to boost up until around 3.6 volts. I had to speed up the process of boosting the battery. It took almost 5 minutes. Let's measure how much voltage it has got now. So if I use my meter here, I'm getting 3.6.2. That's good voltage. I think at least the phone can be able to show either battery low or can be able to show a charging sign. You see? <laughs> you see? It has power down. So the problem was it the battery low? What? Because we tried to switch it on, it failed. We even tried charging, it failed. So let's wait for it to completely power on, then you can examine more. This is one percent. It is charging. But it's something that you should watch. You see at current meter, this phone is charging at 3.2 amps and it's actually dropping down to 2.9. This is not good. This one should be charging at around 4.4 amps and it is also better for it to jump up to 1 point something amps. So this is a phone that will take forever to, to be full. So there is something wrong with it, the charging circuit of this phone. We would have given it some more time and waited but already the amperage is showing us even if you give it a day. Anyway you never know in a full day it can be full but that's not reasonable. 
So this battery is quite big, it's almost like 4000 mAh. It could take around 2 hours or 3 hours to be full, but at this amperage, it can take a day. So let's take out the motherboard and test the charging circuit of this one. So this is the motherboard. I'm trying to cross-examine and see if there is any water damage or any shorted component. This is the charging connector. It looks clean. What we are going to do, we are going to first replace this component. Usually they might look clean, but they might have broken parts inside. So let's replace this one. So while removing this charging connector, we usually use this connector just to make to regulate the heat. Shall use some flux. I'll set my A at 4 and my temperature at 240. That should be enough. it comes out very fine yeah very fine so let's replace a new one I have to first align it better In the correct position. I'll use my A at, uh, at 2.5 and I'll use the heat at 3.4 or 340. You see when it heats up, it actually aligns itself in the right position. That's fine now. Let's wait for it to cool down. Let's clean it up. Replacing charging system is not a hard task. As long as you've got the right workstation replacement tool, so it fits up perfectly. So let's fix it back.
so you see now it's consuming um, 0.41 amps and this is quite good in actual sense it's consuming around 1.2 amps but my meter has a current draw from what it's reading here so this will charge very fine let's give it some time to see that it can jump from 1 to 2 percent you can see that the current now is uh, 0.43 so the charging ice inside can detect that the battery is at low so it can increase on the amperage that is going to the battery so let's check and see yeah now it's on two percent so it's going to be charging very well now and i believe it won't come back so thanks guys for watching if you like this video you can comment your questions below you can subscribe for more videos thank you